Hi, welcome back for another lesson. So in this lesson, we will start looking at various measurements uh, that we can take within a circuit. So for this lesson, we will focus on current intensity and potential difference. So let's begin with current intensity. Current intensity is represented by the letter I, capital I, and that represents the number of charges that flow past a given point in a circuit every second. So if we could measure the amount of electrons that would pass within this point, for example, or it could be within the light bulb, it could be any point uh, within the circuit. If we could measure the amount of particles of charges that circulate per amount of time, that would be called current intensity. So we know that it's always the same uh, electrons that circulate, it's always the same current that circulates in a loop, right, back and not back and forth, but always in the same direction. So if we can count them here, or here, or here, it should always be the same uh, particles, the same electrons. Think of hamsters that are going through a maze. Uh, if there's only one loop, one way to go around, you're always going to count the same hamsters going through the same maze. So you can keep that mental image. Uh, it's the same thing with the electrons. The electrons are always the same ones uh, circulating around the circuit. So if we can measure them, we'll call that current intensity. And current intensity is expressed in amperes. So those are the units. We say amps normally. So amps uh, is used to measure current intensity. Now, sometimes the current intensity is very small. So we will use instead milli amperes. So milliamperes is similar in a sense to millimeters. So millimeters is to meters the same way that milliamperes is to amperes. So in one amp, I have a thousand milliamps, or in one amp, I have 0 0.001 amp. This can be useful when we do calculations for a circuit and the quantities are very small, we're going to need to remember this conversion. So how do we effectively measure current intensity? Well, we need an ammeter. So the ammeter has to be part of the circuit because the electrons have to pass through, the current has to pass through the ammeter for the ammeter to basically count the amount of particles that are passing through. So it's connected in series. In other words, consecutively with other components of the circuit. How do we actually calculate current if we have to do calculations? Well, Current intensity, we said, is, is a measurement of the number of charges that pass through the circuit per unit of time. So this is how it looks mathematically. I is equal to Q, which we know is the letter representing charges, over delta T, so the variation of time. If we look at the corresponding units, we would have 1 amp for current is equal to 1 coulomb per second. But we know that 1 coulomb is basically a group of particles, so 1 coulomb contains 6.25 times 10 to the 18 electrons. So we could also say 1 amp is 6.25 times 10 to the 18 electrons that circulate in a given point of a circuit per second. But it's rare we're going to be using this number. We're normally going to be working with coulombs because there's too many electrons circulating to basically deal with them uh, one at a time. The numbers would be too big. Okay, so what could a problem look like? Well, this is the first example. A light requires a current of 15 amp. What is the charge needed for one minute of operation? Okay, so we're looking for Q, we're looking for the charge, and we are given the current. So I would have 15 amps. As you can see, it's pretty simple. We have two out of three variables. So it's really plug and play. So we have I, we're looking for Q, but we're given the time. So we're looking for Q, and the time has to be, if you recall, in seconds. So it says per minute, so in 60 seconds. Okay, so what does this give us? 60 times 15, it gives us 900 Coulomb. Okay, so Q is equal to 900 Coulomb. Now, if we look at the follow-up oops, at the follow -up question, how many single electrons does this represent? Okay, so now we have to use our famous uh, Coulomb number. So in one Coulomb, I know that there is 6.25 times 10 to the 
times 10 to the 18 electrons. Okay, so knowing this, if I have 900 Coulomb, how many electrons do I have? Well, I can actually cross multiply, right? I can do a ratio. So 6.25 times 10 to the 18 times 900 divided by 1 will give me the number of uh, electrons contained in 900 Coulomb. And that would be 5.625 times 10 to the 21 electrons. Okay, so that's the amount of electrons contained in 900 Coulomb of charges of electrons. Okay, so those are typical simple questions you could get about current. Now let's take a look at voltage or potential difference. So potential difference is represented by the letter V, capital V. Sometimes you will see capital U. Okay, so it could be one or the other, but the most common one is capital V. So that represents the amount of energy that the electrons will spend in various areas of the circuit. And to know how much they spend, we need to know how much they had before and how much they have after in terms of energy. So that's why the voltmeter is connected in what we call parallel, right? So it's as if there's an alternate path, right? We know that when there's a parallel circuit, we have various paths for the electrons. So in this case, we'll say the voltmeter is connected in parallel because you have two nodes. So the electrons basically tell the voltmeter how much energy they have before they go through the light bulb and how much energy they have after. So we know exactly how much energy they spent in the light bulb. And because they spend that energy, the light bulb gets lit, right? So the voltmeter measures that. The difference, that's why it's called a potential difference. It's the difference between the before and after in terms of energy. And this, obviously, because it's called voltage, is measured in volts, small v. So the variable for voltage is capital V, but the unit is small v. Okay, so you have to make sure that you get that right. So mathematically, this is how it looks like. So voltage, capital V, is equal to the energy spent per charge. So if you have more charges being quote-unquote studied, you'll have more energy involved. If we look at the corresponding units, we'll have one volt is equal to one joule, right? Energy is expressed always in joules, over one coulomb of charges. So what kind of problem could we have? Grab my pen. Oops. Okay. So the electrical circuits in our homes usually supply a potential difference of 120 volts. So V is equal to 120 with small v, don't forget. What is the amount of energy, so I'm looking for E, what is the amount of energy provided by a charge of 200 Coulomb? So what energy is provided by 200 Coulomb of charges if the house has a voltage of 120? So obviously I will multiply 200 by 120 to get the energy, the corresponding energy, and that would be 24,000 joules. Okay, so for voltage and current intensity or potential difference in current intensity, it's not any more complicated than that. In the next lesson, we'll talk about resistance. Down the road, we're going to put all that together and we will analyze circuits. So each individual calculation or concept is relatively simple, but when you start putting them all together in the same circuit, that's when it becomes a little bit more finicky, but we'll take it one step at a time. So that's it for voltage and current. Um, if you have any questions, you know what to do. Otherwise, I'll see you for your next lesson. And until then, take care.